Ever feel like you're speaking a different language and trying to explain your vision for a video to a motion graphics artist or video editor? As marketers are constantly tasked with bringing creative ideas to life, and video is a big part of that process. Our job is to take an idea that was discussed in a meeting or a brainstorm session, and then we have to translate it into compelling video ads, product overview videos, or tutorials. And the thing with video is, it, it takes a village to make it happen. There are often several different types of creative professionals involved, including designers, editors, writers, and animators. We're expected to collaborate seamlessly to make it all happen. But there is an issue. Many of us in marketing don't come from media backgrounds. We don't have college degrees in design, animation, or video production. And without formal training in this area, it can be challenging to effectively communicate our vision. I've gone through this myself. I've owned a lot of agencies in my career, and these agencies have focused on things like video production, animation, podcasting, writing, and broader marketing services. But my background was in computer information systems. I started out as a programmer. I had to fail a lot before I finally got comfortable working with video editors and animators. I went through many off-brand videos and projects that, that really missed the mark until I developed a better system for myself. So in this episode, I'll show you how I bridge the gap between what's in my head as a marketer and what this means for a team who creates videos. I'll go over three key pieces to a visual brief for video projects. And I'll outline how I use a tool called Miro to bring it all together and speak a common language with motion graphic artists and video editors. Translating marketing ideas into video concepts is hard. Often when working with video professionals, they don't have the same context as you. They weren't part of the, the marketing brainstorming session and they don't have access all the background information. And when you're creating a video asset, like an ad, a product overview video, or a tutorial, you need to use more than just words to describe what you want. Video is a dynamic medium that combines multiple elements, things like illustrations, motion graphics, on-screen text, music, and timing. It's not just about design, it's about how these elements all work together to tell a story. If you don't effectively describe what's in your head from a visual and audio perspective, your video team is essentially taking a shot in the dark. So let's imagine you have a great idea for a product overview video that you believe will help your prospects understand your offering better. But when you get the rough cut from your video editor, it looks nothing like what you thought. The, the pacing seems off, the, the music doesn't match the tone you envision, or maybe even the animations don't align with how you wanted to present certain information. Or perhaps you're, you're working on a video ad campaign and the short videos just don't capture the message you want to get across to prospects. The thing is, it's not just disappointing, it's costly in terms of time and resources. And these types of revisions push out your start dates for campaigns or other projects. And that's where visual briefs for video come in. They're a key ingredient for streamlining your creative process and getting the results that you want out of video. Think of a visual brief for video as a roadmap. Guide your video production team from concept to creation. It's not just about what you want. It's about showing them what you mean and how you want it to unfold over time. When I use a visual brief for video projects, I speak the same language as the production team. This leads to fewer revisions, quicker turnaround times, and ultimately, video content that aligns with my original vision. Now that you understand why I believe visual briefs are so important for video projects, I want to walk you through how I build them using Miro. Miro is an online collaborative whiteboard platform that enables teams to visualize ideas, plan projects, and innovate together in real time. It's what we use across all of our agencies, which is Spoke, Motion, and New North. When it comes to a visual brief for video, I like to think of it as a combination of really three different components. There's a written video brief, there are mood boards and samples, and then there are storyboards. 
So let's go through each of these steps in detail. Even though this episode is all about visual communication, I believe every great visual brief and video actually starts with a solid written foundation. So in, in Miro, I actually put the creative brief on the canvas itself. So as you can see here, and I'll zoom in a little bit, this is where I put all the major components of a very standard creative brief. This is something that you would often see for really any kind of creative project that you've traditionally worked on. Um, so I've covered here the, the campaign or project objective. So we're gonna create some high quality photographs and short videos in this case for this particular project. Also talk about the, the target audience or ideal customer profile. And like with any project, it's good to dial this in as specifically as possible. Um, you know, in this case, it, it's for our broader audience, but if you are working on a very specific video, can you really get detailed with this audience piece and, and help uh, really your, your video editor or motionographer understand that the nuances that, that might exist for this particular audience. In addition to that, one thing that I always like to include is, is the, the key message or the big idea that we want to get across for a video. Um, and in this case, we want to get across that, you know, if you're a company, you want to own the media, own the market, and you want to become the go-to leader in your industry. So that, that is really the underlying message for everything that, that's involved with this project. Um, in addition, you always want to consider the call to action or what's the next step you want the audience to take. That's what we're ultimately driving towards within a video project. And then um, usage. So for this particular project, how are you going to use the video? Where is the ultimate distribution? Um, will it be put on YouTube? Uh, will it be consumed on LinkedIn? Or uh, will we feature this content on the company's website? It's always important to, to document that. And then there are also some technical components here, uh, the file specifications. So are these photos uh, for print? If so, we need high resolution photos in a certain format. Um, from a video perspective, what are we filming in or what are we ultimately exporting in? In this case, it's 4K resolution in various formats. And then what's the aspect ratio? Is this gonna be widescreen, 16 by nine landscape? Are we going to have a, a square format or we're gonna have more of a portrait vertical style video for shorts and reels? Um, and then lastly, you know, with any creative brief, it's good to just include some, some additional notes, you know, uh, some other things to keep in mind. And if you park them here in your, your creative brief, then these are always uh, a part of, of what your, your designer is working on or your video editor is working on. These things are always top of mind. They're included in your actual visual creative brief. And all of these things are really important to, to setting the foundation for your designers, you continue to work together on, on later stages of the product. Now comes the fun part. These are the mood boards. These are the visual collages that capture the look, feel, and style that you're aiming for. With mood boards for video projects, I include all types of assets to show what's really in my head. This is where Miro uh, becomes a, a big part of the process. You can simply paste any image from your clipboard or take screenshots and throw them on the canvas and a link to a YouTube video allows you to embed video samples directly on the canvas as well. For a video project, I typically include a lot of elements, such as color palettes, typography examples, style frames, animation samples, music tracks, voiceover, etc. In this example of a mood board, um, we're working with a project that involved uh, a, a number of different uses. So we had a, an on-site on shoot um, over a couple of days in our own offices. And um, we wanted to capture a variety of things, everything from on-camera uh, presentations to B-roll and then photography and even uh, live in-person recording of podcasts. So there were a variety of things that we had to include in the mood board to um, really work with our on-site film crew that, that was involved. So we not only had... Um, folks from a video editor and motion graphics um, post-production standpoint, we actually wanted to communicate the look and feel for the photographer and the director of photography on the video side for the, the look and feel that we, we were going for up front. And a lot of times, uh, you know, a big mistake that people make is they expect all the work or 
the the design, the look and feel to all uh, rest upon the shoulders of their photographer or their cinematographer. And and that's a really often a, a big mistake because they might not know the, the look and feel that you're going for, the type of style or how you want things filmed or shot. And that's why getting the mood board down in a tool like Miro becomes so important. Um, and as you can see here, if we scroll up to the top left, this type of content uh, was delivered using a teleprompter. So this is where we would have um, folks from our company uh, reading off scripts that we developed ahead of time, um, and they were filmed inside the, the office. And so what we wanted to do in this mood board is demonstrate the, the type of lighting that we were going for and, and how the background would, would kind of fall off and we would get that, that shallow depth of field there. And um, this, this helps the cinematographer really understand how lighting um, should be set up, you know, the type of contrast that we have on the subject itself, uh, how the background should look, et cetera. And in this case, um, this is the, the type of content that we were filming uh, for the podcast setup that we had. So as you can see here, we've got wide shots blended in. Um, we have tight shots of the conversation between the, the host and the guest. So all this was uh, a part of, of one of the key days that we had for this project. And then if I scroll down here, this is uh, the type of, of B-roll and photos that we were going for. So, uh, you know, very candid shots, uh, people uh, in action in the office, um, you know, doing the work that we do. Um, and you can see that we have like some some dirty shots here. So we got some things out of focus coming in into play. Um, you know, we, we really want to feel like that we were in this environment and, and a part of the staff in this situation. And then lastly, as you can see here, I included a, a link out to a video at YouTube uh, as an additional example. And then this was the, the behind the scenes photography that was included. So uh, the difference here is you can see that uh, we actually have um, shots of the crew that are involved. Um, and, and we see how like some of the equipment and, and things uh, were laid out. And this was uh, one of the additional um, objectives for the campaign. So all of this really works together. And if you take this approach with a mood board, um, you're able to get a lot out of a couple days of filming. So as you can see here, we have like four really different types of video that we're creating. Um, and it all helps to uh, connect the dots for the different folks that, that we're working with, not only on site with the crew, but then also the editors that are putting everything together in post-production. The final step involves creating storyboards. And these are like the, the skeleton of your video. They show the, the visual progression, content placement, and, and timing without the distraction of any final imagery or, or polished animations. In Miro, I create a series of frames, each representing a, a key scene or moment in a video. For each frame, I, I include a, a rough sketch or a placeholder image, a description of the action or animation, a, a corresponding voiceover, timing information. I'm not aiming for pixel perfect designs here. The goal is to communicate the flow and functionality of the video clearly. In this example here, uh, you can see me going through a, a LinkedIn video ad that we have really um, blocked out into about five or six key sequences. So the thing that I think of with a storyboard, especially from a marketing perspective, um, I'm not lining up every single element. I'm kind of leaving that perhaps up to the animator or the video editor. But I do want to um, articulate that the major scenes or, or pieces of the video and think about that from a marketing perspective and, and the message that I want to communicate. So as you can see here, I, I have this video called Stop the Scroll. And I talk about the, the cold opener or the, the first thing that the viewer sees um, when they play this video. And I have that the video is starting with a, a boring LinkedIn feed. And so like we, we want to show that, uh, you know, um, this is how you, you normally see LinkedIn. This is the feed um, that's normally presented to you. And then we want to be able to show uh, content that stops the scroll. So that's where we, uh, we really bounce into um, a different type of content. And that's really the message that we're trying to get across with this particular video. And then you can see here as we scroll to the right, we got some key messages. We want to say 
you know, create content that stands out in the feed. So stop the scroll, stand out in the feed, and then we're describing what we want to see on, on screen. We're not actually showing or designing anything here, but this is really our gray box uh, storyboard, storyboard designs. We're showing where potential placement or text um, would, would be included in this particular frame. And the big thing here is we are also conveying from a marketing standpoint, what's the weight of the message or what are the most important things we want to get across? And so this helps connect the dots for a designer or a video editor. Then as you can see, as we move along, uh, there's a, an additional uh, message that we want to get across. So we can even describe some of the movement or animation that we envision, um, you know, whether uh, the, the phone slides or text comes in. And then lastly, we have a, a transition to show uh, text on screen and to really provide that, that lasting image at the end. You know, what is the thing that we want to leave our viewers with? So we describe that, that ending piece there and, and um, the different elements that we want to see uh, on the screen. And then we also include the, the logo, lock, logo lockup or what is that final call to action that we want to make sure that uh, we include there. And I think this is helpful. Um, and you can work with your, your designers uh, and video editors on the amount of creative liberty that they have. You know, the, the level of detail that you include in your storyboards um, does have some flexibility there. And, and that's where you develop a really good relationship with uh, your video editor and, and designer. But this process here um, with the storyboards is where you, you help connect the dots and, and really do speak that common language together. Once you've completed all three steps, your Miro board becomes a comprehensive visual brief for your video project. It has the written details, the visual inspiration, and then the, the structural layout or the storyboards all in one place. And by using this process, you'll bridge the gap between marketing concepts and video execution. You'll communicate more effectively with your production team, you'll reduce revisions, and really just streamline the overall process. I've had my share of failed video projects and frustrating delays during my career. But when I use visual briefs, it helps me create faster and build momentum with campaigns versus just uh, spinning my wheels. So remember that the goal isn't to become a, a video expert overnight. It's really about creating a, a common language that allows you to translate your marketing vision into a format that really resonates with video professionals. Hopefully this process can help you with your next video project. Good luck on the next one.